This LOS is explain life or reserve and life or liquidation and their effects on financial statements and ratios. Life or liquidations. In periods of rising inventory unit costs, the carrying amount of inventory under FIFO will always exceed the carrying amount of inventory under LIFO. Because it's first in, first out, prices are rising, the, uh, least, uh, the less expensive inventory is gone and what's left over is the more expensive. Under LIFO, last in, first out, the more expensive inventory is gone, so you'll have the uh, less expensive inventory. So the carrying amount of the inventory under FIFO is always going to exceed the carrying amount of the inventory under LIFO. The LIFO reserve may increase over time as the result of the increasing difference between the older costs used to value inventory under LIFO and the more recent costs used to value inventory under FIFO. Also, when the number of inventory units manufactured or purchased exceeds the number of units of sold, the LIFO reserve may increase as the result of the addition of new LIFO layers. The quantity of inventory units is increasing and each increase in quantity creates a new LIFO layer. When the number of units sold exceeds the number of units purchased or manufactured, the number of units in the ending inventory is lower than the number of units in the beginning inventory and a company using LIFO will experience a LIFO liquidation. Some of the older units held in inventory are assumed to have been sold. If inventory costs have been rising from period to period and LIFO liquidation occurs, this will produce an inventory related increase in gross profits. The increase in gross profit occurs because of the lower inventory carrying amounts of the liquidated units. The lower inventory carrying amounts are used for cost of sales and the sales are at the current prices. The gross profit on these units is higher than the gross profit that would be recognized using more current costs. These inventory profits caused by LIFO liquidation, however, are one-time events and are not sustainable. Continuing with LIFO liquidations, LIFO liquidations can occur for a variety of reasons. The reduction in inventory levels may be outside of management's control. For example, labor strikes at a supplier may force a company to reduce inventory levels to meet customer demands. In periods of economic recession or when customer demand is declining, a company may choose to reduce existing inventory levels rather than invest in new inventory. Analysts should be aware that management can potentially manipulate and inflate their company's reported gross profits and net income at critical times by intentionally reducing inventory quantities and liquidating older layers of LIFO inventory, selling some units of beginning inventory. During economic downturns, LIFO liquidation may result in higher gross profit than would otherwise be realized. If LIFO layers of inventory are temporarily depleted and not replaced by fiscal year end, LIFO liquidation will occur, resulting in unsustainable higher gross profits. Therefore, is it imperative to review the LIFO reserve footnotes disclosures to determine if LIFO, LIFO liquidation has occurred. A decline in the LIFO reserve from prior period may be indicative of LIFO liquidation. So now we're going to work through in more detail the uh, conversion of the statements from LIFO to FIFO. And this is in the situation where prices are rising. Okay, so we recall from the chart that we've seen a couple of times now that uh, if price, inventory prices are rising, FIFO is going to have a lower cost of goods sold because first in, first out, we're selling the least expensive inventory, the, er, the older units at the lower price. So our cost of goods sold is going to be lower than under the LIFO. Okay, so if we've got a lower cost of goods sold, our inventory is going to be higher under FIFO. Okay, the FIFO inventory is going to be higher than under the LIFO. That makes sense because first in, first out, what's left in inventory? It's the most recent units and they're at the higher price. Okay, so therefore, uh, that's why when we look at the inventory under the FIFO method, it's the inventory under the LIFO method plus this LIFO reserve. We get information on the LIFO reserve in the notes to the financial statements, okay? So it's very important. And it's important to see the change in that reserve. Again, normally if prices are rising and units are being added to the inventory, we're gonna see an increase in the reserve. But the LIFO liquidation 
is when we've got less inventory units at the end of the year than at the beginning. So we're starting to sell those older units, which gives us that bump up in gross profit. So if the reserve went down, then on a LIFO liquidation, uh, we would change the sign here on the cost of goods sold. So we see cost of goods sold is lower under the FIFO method when prices are rising. So how do we adjust it? It's the cost of goods sold under the LIFO method minus the increase in the reserve. And that's the change. The increase is the change from year to year, not the total reserve. So as I said, if it was a liquidation, the sign would be different. We'd have to change it to positive. Now for our um, net income, we can see under FIFO, we've got lower cost of goods sold. So we have a higher net income, okay? So it's our net income under the LIFO method uh, plus the increase again. So that's the change in the LIFO reserve, but it's times one minus the tax rate, okay? Uh, then for in terms of when we move to the balance sheet, the retained earnings, the retained earnings on the FIFO method is going to be the retained earnings under the LIFO method plus the LIFO reserve, the total reserve, not the change, times one minus the tax rate, okay? And our cost of goods sold adjusted, cost of goods sold under the LIFO method minus changes included in the cost of goods sold for inventory write downs minus the change in the LIFO reserve. That's a little bit of a nice to know, not as much as a need to know. What's important to understand is the adjustments with regards to cost of goods sold, net income, retained earnings, and the inventory. So inventory and retained earnings on the balance sheet, cost of goods sold, net income, on the uh, income statement. I know we've seen this about three times now. So those of you that are good at accounting uh, are thinking, well, why are we seeing this again? But this LIFO to FIFO is one area for people that don't have a strong background in accounting. It just takes a little bit of work to kind of get the hang of it. And I find through repetition and review, uh, it usually works. So again, this is just the same old chart. Uh, when the inventory prices are rising, we've got our LIFO and our FIFO. Uh, by now we know that uh, FIFO or cost of goods sold is less than our LIFO. But what I've done now in this chart, now it's starting to make sense to everybody, is I've put in the formulas here at uh, cost of goods sold and net income and inventory and retained earnings, the adjustments that you have to make when moving from LIFO to FIFO in the uh, rising inventory environment. So for the cost of goods sold under FIFO, when prices are rising, it's the LIFO method minus the increase in the LIFO reserve. So that's, I put that in bold red because that's the change. Net income, it's the net income under the LIFO method. We're higher, so it's plus the increase in the LIFO reserve. Again, that's the change, but times one minus the tax rate, okay? So that's what's, you know, that's our net income. That flows to retained earnings. So you would see that, you know, this is getting easier to understand now that uh, our retained earnings would be the LIFO method plus the LIFO reserve um, times one minus the tax rate, okay? Um, and that's not the change because retained earnings is accumulating and building up over time. Same thing here, uh, uh, inventory, the, uh, the reserve is building up over time. So the inventory under the FIFO method is the inventory under the LIFO method plus the uh, entire reserve, okay? So hopefully that's starting to make a lot more sense now with regards to the differences between um, cost of goods sold, net income, inventory values, retained earning between LIFO and FIFO when inventory prices are rising. And then again, as I said, we have to understand when there's a LIFO liquidation uh, uh, that the older units are being sold now, uh, that's gonna change these signs, okay? So a practice question to finish the LOS as we often do. So assume US GAAP applies unless otherwise noted. An analyst gathers the following information about a company. Uh, sales in 2007, 2008. So you can see we're going from right to left here. Always be careful. Um, year end inventory, the LIFO inventory method. We've got the LIFO reserve and we've got our cost of goods sold under our LIFO. If the company uses the FIFO inventory method instead of LIFO, the company's gross profit is closest to A, 22.9%, B, 29.8%, or C, 33.2%. Okay, this is a nice question. These ones is just always take a little bit of practice uh, if you don't have a strong background in accounting. So the first thing we can see is that the LIFO reserve went up. So we know that uh, inventory prices are rising, units are being added, it's not a LIFO liquidation, okay? So we need to go from LIFO to FIFO. 
So we recall that the formula for the cost of goods sold under the FIFO is the cost of goods sold under the LIFO minus the change in the reserve. That's the difference, so that's important. So you have to see here the change in the reserve is 36.4 minus 21.8 equals 14.6. That's the change in the reserve, okay? So just going to bring up my calculator here very quickly. Okay, so we have our cost of goods sold. Uh, so first of all, we did the change in the reserve. That's 14.6. So our cost of goods sold under FIFO is cost of goods sold under LIFO minus the change in the reserve. So 203.9 minus the 14.6. And you can see our cost of goods sold under FIFO would be the 189.3. Okay. So our, our, so our sales minus cost of goods sold under the FIFO would be 94.2. And then to get our gross profit would be 94.2 divided by the 283.5. Just make sure you use the right number. And uh, that's why I said always be careful if you're going from uh, left to right or right to left. Sometimes they'll give you 2007 on the left column and 2008 on the right. Uh, and that's fair. You just have to keep your eyes open. Uh, that's a nice little uh, uh, switch that they can do, okay? So this is now fairly easy. Sales minus cost goods sold, 94.2. Uh, uh, gross profit, 94.2 divided by the sales, 33.23. So the correct answer is C. Uh, not too difficult. You just have to understand cost of goods sold under FIFO is the cost of goods sold under LIFO minus the change in the reserve. The reserve was increasing, so it is minus the change in the reserve. And it's the, um, so you had to look here, Cost of goods sold under the under the LIFO. Um, subtract the change in the reserve. Then sales minus that uh, revised cost of goods sold under FIFO gives us our gross profit and our gross profit margin. Gross profit divided by sales, 33.23. Couple of calculations to make in 90 seconds, but not too bad. And with that, that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.